Unless you see signs and wonders, you do not believe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the Gospel of the Sunday, this Sunday, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, there is the episode of the father whose son is dying, and the father goes and beseeches our Lord for the cure of his son, asking him to save him from what seems to be certain death. Those of you who are parents can probably relate what, with what solicitude that father must have spoken to our Lord, asking for the life of his child. And he tells our Lord, Sir, come down before my child dies. And there is in that little sentence something of an, of an implied reproach to our Lord. Essentially telling him, don't just talk, but do something, perform. Show some effect of your power by, raising, by restoring my son to health. And this man is a figure for every one of us, because as human beings, we are always, always given over to the spectacular, to the marvelous. We're never satisfied with the good result that could come about through a simple means. We also want to show. A good example of how that is counteracted for us, we may say on a weekly basis, perhaps even on a daily basis, is the liturgical ritual of the Mass. You have the simple rubrics of the Mass. They are numerous, but they are simple. The different bows that are prescribed for the church, the, the priest to make. The different glances that he has to make at certain points in the Mass, whether to the altar cross or to the host on the corporal. The genuflections, the movements of his hands. They are simple in themselves. They are very, in a way, commonplace but yet they are elevated to a supernatural level in this happening of the Mass because they become part of the prayer of our Lord These and become liturgical movements and gestures. And yet we hear that reproach. Unless you see signs and wonders, you do not believe. And unless we were to see what actually happens on the altar as heaven sees it, we're not so interested. We worry about how Mass is really a means to receive Holy Communion. And we start looking at our watch, wondering why is this priest taking so long? We wonder what's going to be, what are we having for lunch today? Another example of how this pride of ours is combated through heaven's intervi intervention is with the Holy Rosary given by Our Lady to St. Dominic. Now this rosary, Sister Lucy, one of the three seers at Fatima, the last of the three to die, she has this to say. She says, the Most Holy Virgin in these last times in which we live has given new efficacy in the recitation of the Holy Rosary. She has given this efficacy to such an extent that there is no problem, no matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or above all spiritual, in the personal life of each one of us, of our families, that cannot be solved by the Rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. Now that is some very strong words in testimony to the Rosary of Our Lady. Which is, again, very simple in itself. Composed of prayers that we learn from our earliest days, on a physical object which is essentially beads strung together to help us keep track of where we are. 
but unless you see signs and wonders. And that's why so many souls, well-meaning souls, go devotion and novena hunting. They try to find that one practice or observance that does it all with all of the infallible bells and whistles. And they have to start bringing in briefcases to carry the number of cards that they have collected in that search. When they have this incredible weapon, this incredible means in their own pocket. Or in daily Catholic life, once more, a reproach to our pride that is so wanting to be satisfied with something spectacular. Living this daily Catholic life necessarily involves times of sacrifice. You parents remember, I'm sure, quite well, the nights when you had to sacrifice sleep to comfort a crying baby. Or the heartache at the idea that you could not provide what you would desire to provide for your family whether it was for their comfort, whether it was for their necessity. The sacrifices involved in being married and the daily give and take, the daily crucifixion that is involved between these two independent souls that are supposed to be two in one flesh. And that is to say nothing of the religious life, where so much of sacrifice goes unseen by the world. So much is carried in the silence of one's own soul. And yet in, all, in every instance, our pride flares up because we need the signs and wonders of angels blowing trumpets and mystical experiences to testify to the sacrifice that we've accomplished. Again, to quote Sister Lucy, putting up with any sacrifices that are asked of us in our day-to-day -day lives becomes a slow martyrdom, which purifies us and raises us up to the level of the supernatural through the encounter of our soul with God in the atmosphere of the presence of the Most Holy Trinity within us. We have here an incomparable spiritual richness. In other words, you have it all by being in the state of grace because God's in your soul. You're in the state of friendship with God. But we need our pride desires to have these pats on the head that we are doing a good job. We need these signs and wonders. And the work of grace in a soul. We need signs and wonders to know if we're advancing. We want some kind of spiritual thermometer to take our temperature. We want to know how we stand. We forget that the work of the Holy Ghost in the soul is subtle. It is imperceptible almost. It is hidden. But yet the result is this wondrous work of divine union resulting. True humility goes unnoticed. No one draws attention to themselves in true humility. The Holy Ghost doesn't announce himself working in a soul. And that's why a good litmus test to know that there is a problem is to think we can say we have the humility for such and such a prospect, for such and such a task. We are so humble. That is a clear sign that there is a problem.
And so once again, we're faced with a conundrum. What do we do? How do we solve that? Do we just throw our hands up in despair and walk away? No. We go to our model in all of those virtues. We go to our model in the spiritual life. We go to the Blessed Virgin Mary with her rosary. That simple yet so powerful prayer. We go to her and she will take us to the fruit of the cross. She will take us to the Mass. Teaching us that it is by this confidence and faith, this spirit of faith in the hidden work of the Holy Ghost in the depths of our soul, that is what is needed and what is desired by God for us. She will accomplish that. She will take us and give us this confidence that indeed the Holy Ghost desires this and wants to work, but in this hidden way, on His terms. Not by doubting and rationalizing and calculating, but believing. Not needing signs and wonders that feed our pride but being simple and having, as our Lord calls it, this single eye of faith. And how that ties in with the apostle of today, St. Luke, the evangelist rather. One of the four to write an account of our Lord's public life, his public ministry. There was no spectacular occurrences in the life of St. Luke until after he was going into the apostolate with St. Paul as the companion to St. Paul. Yes, he wrote the gospel, the third gospel. Tradition tells us that he, so to speak, interviewed Our Lady. And that's why there are so many details in the gospel of St. Luke that are not in the other three. And those details pertain to her. And he has that simple, this simplicity of faith, this simplicity of confidence. It is not a far, it is not hard to imagine that if indeed he had this connection, this privilege of contact with Our Lady, that she would have taught him this very thing. That what is really important is not the signs and the wonders, but this work of grace that is indeed subtle, invisible. So go to Our Lady. Ask her for that same confidence. Ask her for that same spirit of faith that she would have communicated to St. Luke that she would have communicated to all of the apostles and that she desires to communicate to you. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.